okay, so it is super late. It's 9 p.m. Central Time on a Sunday night. So hopefully I can catch you right after you put the kids to bed or whatever. Um, I snuck away to my office. My little guy, who's one, is currently still crying in his crib. My husband's gonna have to deal with him. My three-year-old and five-year-old, or I guess she just turned four. So four-year-old and five-year-old are currently getting their last bedtime snack. So you might hear craziness in the background that is just real life. And if you have a real life, then I encourage you to do this business too. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, if I don't know you yet, my name is Bethany Shipley and your girl, Christy, is one of my favorite people in the world. She's one of the most inspiring people and we collaborate on a honestly weekly, sometimes daily basis. Um, I learned so much from her. And so we were just chatting about like, hey, how's it going last month? Um, you guys are getting so close to crown and I'm so excited for you. Hi, Chantel. Um, I'm so excited for your team and just everything that's happening. And um, we are also going for crown. We are about 100,000 behind you guys in like pace or whatever we're going to call it. Um, but still getting super close as well. So it's just really fun to have people to do this business with. And here is the thing about this business that I want to encourage you with. Um, surround yourself with people who are better than you. So if you are like in this business and you're the best in your circle, circle, like your team is growing faster than everyone else in your rank group, that is a problem. You need to be surrounding yourself with people who are moving faster than you. And so if that evokes feelings of inadequacy, that's something to look in the mirror about. That's not something to say, never mind, I'll go back to a smaller pond. So as a really small fish um, in a big pond, or I guess you don't want to be a big fish in a small pond. You would rather be a small pond uh, small fish in a big pond okay um and that's really important because winners who want to actually win at business are okay letting their own personal um need for significance go to the back burner in order to help the team succeed and if you're in this business for your own personal significance it's going to show up in some different ways. So here's what I'm committing to you tonight. I'm gonna be brutally honest, okay? I'm gonna shoot extremely straight with you because I believe in you. And it is very counter my personality to shoot straight. And it's something that I've been working on a lot lately. And it has actually been what I believe is a catapult to my business success to be able to say in love, like here's what I see and here's what I hope for you. And so I'm gonna shoot straight for you. And so I'm gonna be talking tonight to the people who wanna go to the top. There are probably a lot of people in this group who are hopeful that they will ever one day hit the rank of executive. That is amazing. And that is a better business decision than the current social security plan of the United States. Um, however, that's not who I'm talking to. I'm talking tonight to the people who want to go to gold, platinum, diamond, and beyond. Um, when I hit crown, I'll say crown diamond, but until I hit that, I feel like it's not fair to say that. So, um, if you want to go to diamond that I'm talking to you tonight, so let's just get this out of the way. If you want to go to diamond, like if you really want to do this and you're committed, I'm going to ask you to drop a little a little raise your hand emoji in the comments or you can just say I'm here for it like here for diamond I want to do this thing I'm going to tell you one of the ways that I didn't know I was special in the beginning or a mindset that I had that was in the beginning that was different that I believe was literally catastrophically changing the trajectory of where my business has been able to go amazing you guys I love this okay literally a mindset that has been the transformation of how I have a group of committed business builders in my team that are not only absolutely amazing, but you know how you try to marry up? You know how you try to find a spouse that's like better than you? <laughs> At least I, I definitely scored in that way. He's like the coolest and I totally married up. Um, he would totally say the same thing, but I know the truth and I know I, I married up. Um, my goal in the very beginning, this is really important, was to enroll up. And I wanted to enroll up and I wanted to get people in my team who were better than me at every aspect of this business. And being okay and having the goal of having that created an environment. 
I feel like this is really important to understand as a foundation for what I may be talking about. To be able to create an environment where there could be people with ownership in my business. Here is what I want. So there, there's the first, there it is. Then we're going to back up and I'm going to share with you my mindset at the very beginning. So when I, when I got started in this business, I was 21 years old. I had one semester of college under my belt. I had a brand new baby. I was married at 19. So I had a husband. We lived on about $2,500 or less a month. He was a personal trainer, so it wasn't really consistent. And we lived in a 900 square foot house in a little of a down, little tiny little downtown um, house. And it was the, it was a magical time. It was simple. It was straightforward. We had a $10 budget for everybody at Christmas. We paid our electrical bill. We didn't go out to eat. I checked my bank account before I got a, a, a coffee. Never got a latte, right? So that's just to give you a picture of where I was at. When I caught a vision for this business, and it was almost as if um, someone took a vial of the Young Living vision, the business of Young Living, and they stuck a needle in my arm and they infected me with what I'm gonna call a virus because we're all familiar with the term virus these days. So they infected me with a virus that was absolutely uncurable and I had a vision for this business unlike anything I had ever had before. I was so excited. I was watching YouTube videos every time Periscope was on back then. Every time someone who was a Young Living Diamond would be on Periscope, I would go follow them. I would watch them. It would My phone would ding. I'd be on. I'd spend hours researching oils. I'd spend hours researching network marketing, listening to Eric Worre do interviews like obsessed, right? I got this infection. And I started listening to these interviews of people who were making a million dollars or more in our industry. And I was trying to think about how do they do it? And how, what is the common denominator? Because everybody has a system, right? Everybody has their own like, you know, ATM, ad tag message. They all have their own like slow lingo and this is how we do it. And I love all that. And I think it's brilliant. I think it gives people confidence in order to buy in. But I knew that at the bottom, the common denominator between everybody, I was trying to find this person makes a million dollars, this person makes a million dollars, this person makes a million dollars. What's the common denominator? And the common denominator that I saw between these people that are making a million dollars more a year was this concept called duplication. And, and before you write me off and you're like, oh yeah, I know about duplication, I wanna explain it in young living terms. Although all of these network marketing professionals were like so amazing in different companies, I'm gonna boil it down to what I did in young living. So I got out a cardboard, a piece of cardboard that was like left over from like an Amazon shipment or something. I don't even think Amazon was a thing for us back then. So. Maybe it wasn't Amazon, but it was like this huge thing of cardboard. I had a Sharpie marker and I started thinking about legs, which I know you guys are all about legs in here. So I was like, okay, who do I know that has all the characteristics of this business that I wanna work with? Because long-term, this is important, long-term, I want to be able to walk into a room and have such an awesome team that they're leading the event that I have leg number one going on a retreat to Bali, that I have leg number two doing this incentive, that I have leg number three doing this on their own, that I have leg number four rocking this volunteer project, and I have leg number five and leg number six, and they're all their own. In my vision, they're all their own independent communities, and they're filled with people who I love and I vibe with and I'm totally involved and I'm giving what I can, but at the end of the day, success to me in, in just the regards of building a sustainable business means that I could stop my work and I could move to, to whatever, Fiji, the, and turn off my phone for three months and come back and see that my business has grown leaps and bounds with or without me, they will succeed. So how can I create that environment? And I know that you all want that too. I think deep down, you all want that too. So I'm gonna teach you like what I did. So I got this huge piece of cardboard and I started thinking about who are people in my life that show those kind of characteristics that are innovative, communicative, they're amazing at whatever it is, right? They have this spirit of openness, they're passionate, they're, they're, con they're connected, they have networks. Who are these people who I could see 
being better at this than me, that they would just rock it. And how can, and so that was the first step. I started writing down every name I could think of. My friend Lara from high school, my sister-in-law Natalie, my mom, my cousin, my um, like literally roommate from college, my sister-in-law's sister, like every person, even if I wasn't BFFs with them, write down their name. Then I took colors and like, let's say I had like, okay, this is blue, a blue color and I'm like, this is leg number one. Leg number one, and I wrote down a community name. So let's say leg number one is like college friends, right? So every person on that list that was from college friends was like blue, 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 blue. And then I started auditing that list and saying, who would I want at the top? Like seriously, not just who would I take, because I would take anyone who wants to enroll with me, but who do I want to lead this team to victory? Who in this circle is the most influential? Who is the person who's the most connected? Who's the person who's the most dynamic? Who is the leader, the natural born leader where there's personal development work that has to be done? Because sure, it's for all of us, but they with the vision, the infection of the, the vision, if they got infected, it wouldn't take a lot of personal work to go and do that. And those were the people that I talked to first. Did they all enroll? Heck no. Did any of them enroll? Barely. It took me three months to enroll my first member. And guess what? She wasn't even someone that I planned to have at the top of a leg. But the vision was there for me to create a stability foundation of ownership. Is this making sense so far? Because now we're gonna talk about a few things that matter in regards to actually being respected by the people that you wanna enroll. Because let's say you get this list and you're like, yes, I have all these high achievers that I want to enroll and I want them to like take this and run with it and I am the only voice they have or they're gonna hear in order to convince them that they should do this business. I'm the one, I'm the nurse with the needle with the virus, right? That gets to infect them with the vision. So how can I make sure that I am in the right place in order to share with them? Well, the first thing is, hey, you can't say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time. So I want you to just relieve yourself of that. You cannot say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time if, you are in the right energy. So when you hear of people like Erin Rogers enrolling with someone and then she hit senior, the, the enroller hit senior star, but Erin Rogers is Royal Crown Diamond, that proves the statement that you cannot say the wrong thing to the right person at the right time, okay? So, oh yeah, I guess I should have said that, Christy. My legs, my six legs are over 50,000 and they're all amazing. I have the most amazing team. I mean, you guys are also amazing, but you know, I'm biased. So, um, so you can't say the wrong thing. However, you can be likable and you can up your chances of actually getting heard by how well you communicate with them and how you build credibility. So let's talk about being likable. I'm actually going to use, it took me a minute to find this. Um, this was the first downline leadership. I did a course. Um, it's only for upper rank leaders and it's Eric Walton's thing, but I think it's a great thing. If you have trouble with people hearing you or listening to you or taking your advice or anything like that, I really recommend doing his course, but um, it's again for upper rank leaders. So I did it at Platinum. I thought that was a great time to do it. Um, so I would not spend your time doing it or you can't even if you're below that, but, um, but, but you just keep it in your mind. So Here's the thing about likability. If you are plain likable when building relationships, you will be so much more successful because every time someone hears from you, every time someone gets a text from you, even if it's on Project Broadcast, if you are likable, they will find a smile on their face or in their heart when they see your name. If you are not likable, it does not matter if you have the best promo, if you have the best fill in the blank, whatever it is. If you are not likable, all of your communication, which is by the way, the magic ticket, your golden ticket in this business. If you're not likable, that's not gonna work. So you have to be likable. This is not a business where we can hire and fire people. Sometimes that would be nice, right? Sometimes you're like, no, like I didn't want them to be, okay. That's not this business. This business is all about actual, what is the word? It's not power, it's about authority and being able to, uh, not authority, influence. It's all about influence. And if you don't have influence with people, if you're not likable, you will not have influence with people. So here are a few traits that is proven from Forbes magazine, uh, an article written in 2014, how to increase your likability 
in 2015 or in 2020 or in 2021. And by the way, full transparency here, I am, so I'm like, I think 28 weeks pregnant with our fourth baby. And I've been going, going, going all weekend. My husband's birthday was this weekend. We just got done with the party literally like 30 minutes ago. I'm gonna take a drink of water real quick because you can hear my voice is kind of like raspy. So just a second. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. So here's how to increase your likability in 2015 and beyond. Number one, relate open heartedly with people. When someone comes to you and they start telling you about their troubles, about things that are going on in their life, this is not the time to point out excuses or point out issues with them. This is the time, literally, if you want to be likable, I'm not talking about how to be the best coach or whatever. I'm talking about likability here. If you're struggling with likability and that's not there, then coaching them is going to do nothing. So likability is first. So open heartedly relate with others. When people come to you with something, relate with them. Here is a little trick for you. If you want to relate with people on a real level, when they are speaking, instead of thinking about what you're going to respond with, practice not doing that. Practice just feeling any emotion that they are feeling. It's called empathy. It's the difference between sympathy and empathy. Sympathy says, I'm so sorry for you. Empathy says, I am sorry with you. Does that make sense? So if you are not likable right now, you have people who do not like you, who do not respond to you, who do not whatever, fill in the blank. Your first step is literally to relate open heartedly with people. And anytime anyone feels anything when they're speaking to you, you are going to practice feeling that on a personal level, on an emotional level with them. So if I start crying right now and I start telling you about, let's see, what could I start crying about? Gosh, probably anything. If I start crying and telling you about my miscarriage that I experienced in 2013, that changed the trajectory of my life. And when I didn't find the heartbeat, I had to start over and what I, the foundation of how I viewed life. If you can feel that feeling with me, good job. You just did it. That's exactly what I'm talking about, okay? Step number two. Kind and gentle, not critical. Kind and gentle, not critical. Any Enneagram ones or eights or fives? Any of you ones or eights or fives? Raise, you don't have to raise your hand, but like mentally raise your hand and say, yep, your tendency is going to be picking apart what they're saying to find the problem, right? But that is not the way to be likable. The, that is a way to solve a problem sometimes, and that is very needed. But in the realm of communication, this is your opportunity to choose kind and gentleness. And step number one is going to help with that, but, but not criticize and not feel critical feelings. Okay, number three, which is kind of the same as empathy, but you are able to walk in another person's shoes. Since I already went on on that, I'm going to move to number four. Have a ready laugh and an easy sense of humor. When someone comes to you and they say, oh my gosh, I'm thinking about buying Revive Oils because they're so much cheaper. Instead of being like, <gasps> no, here's all the reason why. You can, girl, I almost did the same thing. Okay, here's what changed my mind. Do you feel the difference in the energy? What's more likable? I know for me, more likable is laughing, keeping it light. There are problems in this business that arise and how you agree and deal with others, again, likability, it all comes back. So lighthearted, when those big problems come, keep it light, keep it light. Christy does such a good job keeping it light. Okay, okay, here is, don't take yourself too seriously. That's part of it too. Don't take yourself too seriously. So we're on number one, two, three, four, five. Don't take yourself too seriously. You can't ruin your business in a day. You can't build your business in a day. So if you have a bad day, don't take it too seriously. Give yourself a hug, drink a chai, and try again tomorrow. Um, okay, number six. People who are likable, if you wanna be likable, have high integrity and generate trust by showing up. So if you say you're gonna show up at whatever time, which this is hilarious because today I had literally, this never happens to me, but like today I was like, oh my gosh, it was 7.10. And I was like, I can't remember what time me and Christy said we were gonna go. So I came to our chat. She said seven or nine, I'm like nine. <laughs> so anyway, I'm like, oh, I'm a hypocrite right now. Um, but seriously, if you wanna be likable, have high integrity and, ge and generate trust with the people that you're working with. Show up when you say you're gonna show up and literally just really 
really nail that. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Be genuinely happy to be in your own skin and relate to others from a place of confidence. So if you are not cool with you yet, that's a great place to start tonight. Find the things that you love about you and think about those and grow those. Um, number nine, I think, um, be grateful for what you have and for who you are. You have already won the lottery of life. There is a one in one million chance that you would be here right now. I'm sure there's even higher than one million. But like think about the massive, okay, this is like totally hilarious to even say, think about the amount of sperm that you were competing against to get to the egg. And you were the egg. You were the sperm that won. Like you were the, you won the race from your very first race to now you won the first race against what thousands of other sperm. You left those other sperm in the dust and you hit the egg first. Okay. So you won. Then you came through your mother's womb, however, and you made it into your first breath. You passed the first trimester as like this size. You were two years old and learned, you were one years old and learned to walk. You were five years old and you learned to read. You were 12 years, years old and you learned to make new friends. You were 16 years old and you learned what it felt like to feel your heart shatter and then re, regain your confidence and figure out who you are in the world. You already won. Now young living, right, is just an extra on the, the cherry on top. Your rank in young living does not dictate like who you are as a person. You're already a winner. So any Enneagram threes, any eights that need to hear this, any sixes, um, you already won. Congratulations, you already won. So anything you do after this is just extra. You most likely, um, if you are watching this video, you most likely have something to eat in your kitchen right now. If you, if you are really hungry, it might not be exactly what you want, but you most likely have something to eat. You are winning at life. You have breath in your lungs that you are able to take. You're winning at life. You have health enough to at least push the heart button or be on this video. You have enough money to have phones or a computer or internet. You guys, like we are winning right now. 2020 has been weird and in some ways horrible. But like when I look at it in the grand scheme of things, we've been watching this show, me and my kids, we've been watching this show called Alone. And it's these sh this survival show where each person is literally completely alone. They're filming themselves. They're completely alone in wherever they get dropped and they can tap, but they have to call and like get a helicopter to save them. Okay. They're like killing and eating mice. That's disgusting, but I doubt any of you are killing and eating mice for dinner because you need it because you're hungry. Like I know I'm not. So I'm like, we've already won. So just relish in that. Okay. That was, I think number nine, be grateful for what you have and who you are. Okay. That's going to make you really likable. That energy is going to make you really likable. Okay. Number 10, be genuinely happy for other people's successes and joys. When Christy hits crown diamond, I'm going to sob like a baby. I'm going to be so happy for her. And I know she's going to feel the same for me because we're friends and I genuinely care about her success. And it's so cool to be able to be surrounded by people like that. And I think part of that is, you know, when you're coming from a place of confidence and belief that you're also going there and it's just a matter of time, it makes it easy to give. There are people, and I can speak transparently with you guys because you're not in my team. Um, I mean, I can speak transparently with them too, but we have ranked chats. You know, we have stars going for senior star, senior star going for executive, whatever. And there are people in the ranked chat who are so excited for other people's success that whenever they're like, oh my gosh, I just got an enrollment. And they're like the first person to say, you are amazing. I'm so proud of you. When there's other people in the chat that could potentially be feeling like, and I suspect sometimes are feeling like, oh, that's so annoying. Like, why did they get all the enrollments and I don't get any? Okay, that's not a likable energy. And even though that business is cross line and it doesn't matter, that energy seeps into your downline. So if you can show up and cheer for other people, plug into the team, um, your energy will overflow into your downline and they will start cheering for their, their, each other. I will tell you that with 100% confidence, this is why I'm gonna hit crown. This energy of team culture, it has been literally my journey from diamond to crown 
I, I don't even need to hit crown yet to tell you this is why, because I see it so clearly. Before Diamond, I didn't have a team culture. I had a bunch of like individual connections with people in my team that I was trying to foster and help them grow their business and it was working, but there got to a point where I only had so much time in my day for communication. And then what happened was it was like, I can't keep up, I'm overwhelmed and I didn't experience burnout, but gosh, I mean, I've heard of people having burnout, but like a very serious, um, like, I don't know how I can do it all feeling. And then what happened was the most magical thing. And this is so cool. I don't even like need credit. I used to need credit for, for whatever happened in my business. I don't even need it anymore. And that's so freeing and another story for another day. And I have the literally the script written out that I'm going to share with you when I hit crown. But when I hit diamond, six months later, I hired my dad and my mom and dad moved from um, Atlanta to Kansas City my dad is going to be was going to be my full-time assistant my mom however caught the vision for the business she caught the vision she got the injection of the vision for the business and you guys my mom literally took off on this business in a way that i've not seen before in my own team and she just hit platinum last month and that was two years from her starting and she has created an environment in my whole team that is literally untouchable. And yeah, my dad's help with the assistant work has been a, cra a crazy blessing and it's been amazing to be able to outsource some stuff. But really what's taking our team to the next level is the fact that all of my upper linked, upper linked, upper ranked leaders are plugged in and engaged, not just with me, but with each other. And here's how I had to get over out of my own way with this. I used to want to be the reason that I was successful so badly and I didn't even know it. I didn't even understand. And here's when I learned it. I said I wasn't gonna share this right now, but I feel like I'm supposed to. Um, I planted a garden in the spring and I set my timer and I watered my tomatoes from seed and I put them in the window and on a beautiful fall, um, warm day, I would take my seedlings outside and I would let them get sun, take them back in. Then eventually I planted them in the ground and did all this work, right? Same with the lettuce. And I actually harvested my romaine lettuce first. So I went outside and I cut this romaine lettuce and it was like gonna go on my sandwich, right? I was gonna have a burger. It was one of the first days I was out of the first trimester that I was like, oh my gosh, this is gonna be amazing. And I said something, I said, look at this lettuce I made. And instantly I had a no feeling, no. And I was like, whoa, that was interesting. Like I've learned so much from the garden, y'all. Um, I was like, that's interesting. I just had a really strong impulsive no. And I was like, to the fact that I said I made this lettuce because the reality was that I did some work. I planted it in the ground and I watered it but without so many factors of things that I literally could not control, only things I could predict, literally it was outside of my control that I hit, that I hit crown. <laughs> okay, that's amazing. It's the same thing to me. It was outside of my control that the lettuce grew. It was outside of my control that it didn't frost again, that it didn't, which the lettuce would have grown anyway, but just pretend um, that it was sunshiny, that it was all perfect, right? It was outside of my control. And I realized that I was reaping the rewards of complete favor with my effort. Favor with my effort. I was reaping the rewards of nothing that I could control or do. And then I realized it was even more magical that way than had I controlled it. It was even more magical. So if you want a piece of magic in your business, you gotta let the uncontrollable stuff come to you and accept it. Same thing with my tomatoes. I just harvested two trash bags of tomatoes today from my garden because I'm an Enneagram three and I planted 80 tomato plants because what the heck else do you do in quarantine other than buy four chickens, I don't know, or get pregnant. Um, hashtag blessed. Uh, okay, so. <laughs> Chantel, you're so funny. Okay, so I'm like totally rambling, but my point is this. When I needed control or when I needed to be the reason why it worked, it showed up like this. This person's not working good enough in their business. This level one isn't doing enough. I'm the reason why they ranked up and I want everyone to know. Those feelings, which are very real and they were very real for me, 
dissipated when I realized that I wanted magic involved in my business. I don't need to be the reason why. What if an international account comes in your downline tomorrow and you didn't do anything because you don't speak their language and they take off and go for it? Are you okay with that? <laughs> because now I am and I wasn't before. What happened when I became okay with that is I relinquished the reason. I re Let me try that again. I relinquished the reins and I let other people start to like enjoy this with me. <laughs> and that has been magical. Okay, so that's likability. Wow, okay. We're gonna move on to, okay. And I saw you ask about what book I was reading out of. The first part of this, I was reading out of Downline Leadership. Um, it was in, this was from a course I did. This was the book that came with my course. However, since then, Eric gave me another revised edition and um, I have another page about ownership. We're gonna shift into ownership now. So let's say that you're like, hey girl, okay, got it, likability, I'm ready to go. I need to work on being likable, which by the way, I think we can all work on being more likable. So figure out one of those 10 that you struggle with and work on that this week. Um, but I'm gonna move on into ownership now and talking about if you wanna go to Diamond and beyond, how to create ownership. And the first thing is, if you haven't gotten the vision for yourself in this business, like you're not relying on an upline, you're not relying on a class. Now I'm not saying you don't plug in because I, trust me, I think you should plug into everything. I'm saying that if there was a gap and there was something that wasn't being done that you saw an opportunity for, you would have zero hesitation to take a step into the gap and fill the gap. You would create your own incentives for people getting on a call. You would create your own graphics for people getting on a call if they didn't exist, okay? I'm saying if they didn't exist. Because I hate to rock your boat. I don't actually hate it. I'm going to rock your boat and say, Christy is not going to be able to be what she is for you right now forever. She won't be able to do it forever. She has little kids. She has dream life. She has things she's gonna do. I'm not saying she's ever gonna pull out because I'm definitely not either. That whole example of me going to Fiji for three months was an example and I don't think it's reality and I don't think I would ever do it because I love this business and I love it. But the point is she will not always be there to be everything. And I'm not saying she is. And I know many of you are probably taking amazing ownership but I just wanna give you that idea that eventually you have to be the one to step in and say, I wanna create my own empire. I want you to be the one to say, okay, I know that I am in one of Christy's legs and I want our leg to be the top leg in her whole organization. Did I just talk to any twos in the room right now? <laughs> I want our team to be the strongest team in her whole organization. I want our team to be one she never has to worry about. I want our team to be so amazing that no upline ever wonders if any inactives are being touched, if any ERs missed are being talked to, if any money missers are being talked to. That should be your, your sole purpose. You should have a running, I'm gonna say, can I just say should, even though I don't really believe it? You should have a running list of how many people in your team show up on your new to oils classes and next week beat it, your team. Your team, not Christy's team, your team. Now, I'm not saying is it magical what she's building because it absolutely is. And if I were in your team, I would 110% be plugging into everything that she's doing, tagging, adding, tagging, all that. I'm saying when it comes down to ownership, you have to get this deeply rooted desire in the top of your stomach that says, I do not care what it takes, I'm going to the top. By hell or high water, if Christy Rose quit her business tomorrow, I would still be in it 110%. If Danielle Berkeley quit her business tomorrow, if Casey Wiegand quit her business tomorrow, I would do this even if. That kind of ownership is something that no one can give you, no one can create in you, no one can train in you. It comes down to you at 2 a.m. It's you and your creator, your source, 
and you make that decision on a deeply rooted level that no one will understand until they see you show up. And they say things that make you know that they feel your energy. They'll say things like, oh my gosh, I love your energy. I love the way you communicate. I love the way you do your business. Wow, something about you. I really like watching you. I love your content. They'll even tie it to religious things when that they feel passionate about when you've never been outspoken about your about your religion on any social media platform and they'll just say I know that you believe this because they feel that energy from you that right there is what will take you to the next level like the like diamond crown if we could say it royal like that energy and that's what gets you to, to events that's why like when people in their business, like I used to really try hard to like get people to come to convention or like get to be people to come to Diamond Bound or something like whatever event I was like really promoting. And then I realized, you know what? Like them coming to an event is actually just a reflection of where they're at in their business. And if they are sold out for this, then they're gonna say yes. And if they're not sold out, then they're gonna say, ah, oh, wish I could, but my son has a baseball tournament this weekend and like, you know, whatever it is, right? Like they're gonna have a reason and it's not an excuse because it's a real reason, it's a belief. And it's a trumping belief that says, this is more important than this. That just tells you where they're at. So if you are that person that's made a deeply rooted decision where you're like, no, I'm, I literally have a calling. It's like this, it's almost like there's a magnet in your heart to like Royal Crown Diamond and like you cannot help it. That is the feeling you will have when you get this ownership. So let's talk about ownership, okay? So you have the ownership. Um, making ownership happen happen for you. Uh, let's let's take a quick break and I'm gonna take a drink of water. You guys grab a water, grab a oil, put it on. All right. I'm so glad you guys are loving this. Like the comments are so encouraging to this three. All right. So Okay, expand your mindset to see the entire business from the ownership perspective. Seeking areas of ownership avoids a victim mentality. If you've ever said, by the way, like, oh, I would totally be diamond if it weren't for X, Y, Z. Or I would totally be like silver if it weren't for X, Y, Z. This is a part for you. This is a, uh, this is a big piece for you. Okay, um, like a victim mentality thinks that they have some sort of disadvantage that other people ha don't have. I'll have people come to me and say, oh my gosh, I would just love to do the business, but like, I'm so busy. And I'm like, hey, shocker, like I'm also busy and also I choose my busy and I'm owning my busy. You're, when, when people say they're so busy to me, I'm like, hey, you're acting like busy is happening to you when in reality, everything that's on your calendar or everything you have to do, you are choosing to do. Yeah, you may have to make dinner for your kids. You're still choosing to do that. It is a good decision, but you're still choosing it. So stop acting like it's happening to you. Every single person has a busy life, okay? So... Oh, no, Chantel. Yeah, it's relatable. It's okay. Okay. Um, so, so, so like, let's just like all decide to hold each other accountable right now. And if we say something that makes us a victim, like just no, no, it's, it's a reality. Like, here's the thing. I've been so sick this pregnancy, um, that like life has felt really overwhelming, but I'm not going to I'm not going to negate the fact that I felt sick, but I'm going to own the fact that some days I've made a decision to rest instead of work. And that's a decision that I own. And I make, they make that part of your rhetoric to own it. Okay. Back to the book. Okay. Check out the following list and see how you can take ownership or responsibility for these things and actions, realizing that everyone is different and unique. The way you take ownership is likely to be different from the way someone else does. So number one, own the definition of success for your business. Number two, own each element of what it takes to achieve success. Number three, own your influence with the team. Oh, I hope that struck a nerve, because it should. Own your influence with your team. That's all I have to say about that. Number four, own every transaction. Number five, be mindful of your attitudes and behaviors. Number six, own your customer engagements. 
Number seven, own your legacy and the legacy of your business. So here are some questions for you if you want to. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're so sweet, Jessica. Okay, here's some questions for you to ask yourself. What areas of my business are lacking ownership? What area, and if you're watching on the replay, you can just pause it, otherwise just come back and watch. Or you can, maybe someone can type it out. Um, what area does my team and downline think needs to be addressed? Why is this business important to each team member on a personal level? What would a total ownership approach look like for me? Why is this, why is this business important to me? Who owns the success of my business? What kind of changes do I think would make a difference in how others see my business? What do I own? What am I accountable for? What kind of difference in people's lives can I make? How can I show my team that I care? This last one is like such a good one. Is the business better off when I am leading it? Y'all, wow, wow. Okay, so Here's what I mean by that in practical terms, because I understand that that is all very mystical and it's beautiful. Nels, this is something that I really recommend for, and I believe if I remember right, your platinum. It could be wrong. I'm like just going off basic memory. Downline Leadership with Eric Walton. Highly recommend it, especially if you struggle with communication with your team. Like not just like, oh, download Project Broadcast, but like communication. So, okay. Um, here's what it looks like practically. How do you take ownership? It means that when someone on your level one doesn't place an order, you're the one who catches it. It means having systems in place that your businesses run as if you are the CEO. Oh good, almost platinum, okay, amazing. It means having a deeply rooted passion about your downline success it means looking at and writing down how many people you have on your new to oils classes every week and upping that number and making sure your team is communicated with even if they're not plugged in. It means all of the questions on like who should have caught the ball always lands on you, like always. Now, does that mean that you will be 100% perfect? No, because we will never, but it totally that energy is just amazing. So last but not least, I'm going to leave you with, what am I going to leave you with? What, what do I feel? I want to make sure I make the most of your time. Okay. Last but not least, I'll leave you with a roller recipe. Okay. Go. If, whoops. Oh my gosh. Okay. If you haven't made your roller from the convention orders yet, this is the really big fat roller. I just ordered, I think it's 30 milliliter. I ordered a 30 milliliter on, um, I, yeah, I ordered a 30 milliliter on Amazon too. So if it comes in, it's cute, I'll show you. But 10 drops of Valor, 20 drops of Abundance, 20 drops of Highest Potential, 20 drops of Believe, Nope, sorry, 10 drops of believe. So yeah, so did I tell you right? Okay, don't write this down yet. 20 drops of valor, 20 drops of abundance, 10 drops of believe, and 10 drops highest potential. You guys, this roller is, and then I just filled it with fractionated coconut oil. It smells so good. And roll it on yourself every single day before you go to work or you get to work with Young Living or whatever. And like, look at yourself in the mirror or whatever in your blank computer screen or whatever and like look at yourself and truly believe and see yourself as a diamond. Because in, in literally when you're in the car and you're driving, turn off the music and just say, hi, my name is, say your name, I'll say it for me. Hi, my name is Bethany Shipley and I'm a young living royal crown diamond. At first it's gonna sound totally awkward and horrible and you're like, no I'm not. I'm just a whatever, right? Because that's what we all say. And then you're like, okay, no, 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 no. And just practice it again and again. Hi, my name is Bethany Shipley. I'm a Royal Crown Diamond. Picture yourself meeting new people. Hi, my name is Bethany Shipley and I'm a Royal Crown Diamond. Picture yourself at convention with the mic. 
Hi, my name is Bethany Shipley and I'm a Royal Crown Diamond. Hi, my name is Bethany Shipley. I'm a Royal Crown Diamond. Say it over and over and over and the most magical thing will happen and that is this. Your brain will start to believe it and you will start to act like it and you'll start to perform like it and you'll start to take ownership like it. You'll start to take initiative like it. You will start to be likable. All of it will come together and I'm not just saying just because of that but I'm saying the intention is where it starts. So with that, you guys, I love you, Christy. I love you. I cannot wait to cheer you on a crown. I'm so pumped for you and your whole team and every single one of you who's going to hit diamond. Um, you know, I hear people say this all the time. They're like, <laughs> they're like, <laughs> I probably shouldn't even go into this, but whatever. They'll say like, um, everyone in this group, I believe is going to be diamond. And I personally know that that's not true. Like logistically, it's not true. You won't, but not everyone, not you won't, but not everyone will. But I want you to decide that you will be one of the ones. You will separate from the pack. You will do the things. You will do the work. You will take the ownership. You'll take the initiative. You will. You will be a diamond, even though you know you're different. You know it's set apart. You know it's a calling, unlike what, uh, what other people might be doing as a hobby. And I want you to work every single day until that's a reality. All right, you guys. <laughs> Love you guys. I will, how about this? How about I come back in? Yes, okay, 20 drops valor, 20 drops abundance, 10 drops highest potential, and then 10 drops believe. That's what it is with, it. it's so good. It's so, so good. Okay, once you make it, tag me on Instagram. Bethany J. Shipley. All right, love you guys, bye. Mwah.